Okay, now if I saw you and I saw someone from North Korea, could I tell the difference? Like, well, you know, most of the people in North Korea are starving, so you might be really skinny. But other than that, I'm sure we look exactly alike. And the last question he asked me just completely blew me away. He said, so tell me, what's wrong with the Vietnamese? Excuse me? <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with the Vietnamese. After I got out of my interview, it hit me that if Mark Burnett, who's one of the most powerful men on television, uh, and who's traveled all around the world, doesn't know some of the most basic things about Korean Americans and Asian Americans, how many other people in this country don't know either? And that's when I decided that I really wanted to be on the show, not only to try to change stereotypes about Asian Americans, but also to try to educate people about who we are and the fact that we're not all alike. So the reason why this recognition means so much to me is that it because, it's because it suggests in some small way I might have made a difference. My goal wasn't to be on television for its own sake, but to have a platform I could use to have an impact both inside and outside my community. Internally, there are a lot of challenges that we're still struggling to overcome, from the lack of Asian American bone marrow donors, to the silence surrounding domestic violence, to the need for greater political representation. Within the broader mainstream community, we're still the silent minority. We're still fighting misconceptions and stereotypes about Asian Americans in business, in politics, and entertainment. I'm, I've been trying to do my part to raise awareness of these issues, and in my new role as Deputy Chief of the FCC's Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau, I want to work to ensure that our community, as well as every other ethnic community, has a voice in the critical debates going on over communications access, broadband deployment, and media diversity. And that every American, regardless of their race or their background, will become a full member of the digital economy. I think a lot of the work that I'm doing now has been a lot more meaningful to me than anything I did on Survivor. And to be honest, I don't feel that I've done anything particularly special or commendable. I'm just doing what anyone in my position should be doing if they're given the opportunity. So I want you to know how cognizant I am of the fortunate position that I now occupy. How committed I am to using that position to advance the interests of our community and open doors for other Korean Americans. And how much I look to live up to and validate their faith in giving me this honor here today. Thank you. Did we do a good job of picking three? <laughs> you know, this is just, it, it makes this day even more special. Uh, let me move forward with the program, uh, and what I'd like to do is to invite you now to enjoy your lunch, and to tell you at the conclusion of lunch, a special representative for North Korean Affairs with the Obama administration and Minister Steve Bosworth will be our keynote speaker. Uh, and so until then, please enjoy you, your neighbors, get to know one another, and have a, a wonderful lunch, and I'll be back shortly. Thank you very much.